please stand as the family comes in. Dying, Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, Pete Mills put on Christ, so in Christ may Pete be clothed with glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Jesus Christ is pure. Our opening hymn this morning, no doubt a hymn that Pete loved, Amazing Grace. reading from John chapter 14. Hear the word of God from the Apostle John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid.
the word of God for the people of God. My friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Pete Mills. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may, may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, in death, the resurrection. Our gospel hymn is, It is well with my soul. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, from whom we come and to whom our spirits return, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Grant us your blessing this hour and enable us to put our trust in you that our spirits may grow calm and our hearts be comforted. Lift our eyes beyond the shadow of earth and help us see the light of eternity. 
So may we find grace and strength for this in every time of need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we are blessed this morning to have, or actually this afternoon, to have the Reverend Paul Greer with us and his wife Jenny. Uh, they've been friends with Pete and Debbie for a long, long time. So thank you, Paul, for saying a few words. Friends, we come together today to celebrate the life of John Curtis Pete Mills. I want to tell you that, that that insertion of Pete there caused a lot of aggravation and frustration to me. To, to know that he's there in the hospital and I'm there to visit him and they tell me he's not there because they don't have a Pete in the hospital. And, and Debbie, you, you caused me that same anxiety uh, and frustration there. But we come to celebrate Pete's life life that he lived among us it was my privilege to be his pastor to be woven in or to have him woven into my life as I came to serve him and for him to be a part of, of my life the time that I spend with uh, people in hospital waiting rooms and hospital rooms is a time of listening a time of revealing where I learn uh, about the people that I'm there uh, to be with, to support. And unfortunately, for Pete and Debbie, there were many of those hours that uh, brought us together that way. But I want to share with you some of the things that I learned a as I listened. Pete got a job with N&W after serving in the Korean War. The time in Korea was something that other than acknowledging that that was a part of his life that he never talked with me about. But I know that that was a part of his life. And after working for NNW, uh, relocating to Roanoke, and then beginning a relationship with the Kroger Company that led to his position that he had in retirement as superintendent of transportation at the distri distribution center in Salem. As we talked about that, or as I listened to him, I found that there were people that we both knew uh, before the pastoral ministry, ministry. I worked for Xerox servicing their machines. And there were people that I uh, came into contact with and had gotten to know at Kroger um, that Pete also knew. And he shared some things with me about these people that I wish I had known at the time that I was their service rep. What he shared was out of compassion, parts of their life. But that was who Pete was, a compassionate individual. <clears throat> a former coworker from when Pete worked at Kroger shared with me that Pete was someone that you could count on. That when there was a truckload that absolutely had to go out, that wasn't on the schedule, something that had, had to be accommodated, that Pete was the person that you could count on to make sure that it happened. He was a good guy. Those are Garland's words, not mine. But I would, I would echo those words. And Debbie shared with me that while he came across as uh, a very mild person, not spoken, not uh, uh, normally to being outspoken or loud spoken, I should say, that he got his point across and let people know what needed to change, but in a way that uh, did not destroy friendships. Again, that word compassion. Another part of his life was being a part of the Masons and then uh, the Eastern Star in which Debbie served. And again, it's people, re interacting in relationships with people. And then his church and his family. And I want you to know, Carol and Steve, 
Stephen and Bradley, how much he loved you as his family. But Debbie, you all spent 64, better than 64 years in marriage together. And I didn't ask you how many years you spent that, that you were together before you got married. Uh, it's a long time that you two spent together. But the love that he had for you was one that radiated. In the times that you were in a the hospital, then he and I sat in the waiting room. That love came through his, his love and his concern uh, for you. And that is a part of who you are today. One of the um, most important to me and most comforting parts of Scripture is the end of the 8th chapter of Romans. And I'm going to paraphrase that because what Paul says is that there's not anything on earth or out of the earth. In other words, there's not anything material or spirit that can separate us from God's love that has been expressed to us in and through the life of Jesus Christ. I take a lot of comfort in that. But I've also learned uh, that there's another part, at least in my mind, that goes along with that. <clears throat> As we go through life, most of the time we choose to invest our lives in other people. And all of you he are here today because Pete invested part of his life in your life. I am convinced that that is a part of our eternal life, a part that lives on um, after our physical death. That part of our life that we invest in other people's lives. And as I say, you're here because Pete invested that part of his life in you. It is not only living on in you, but in some shape or form, it is who you are today. For we are made up of the relationships that we have encountered along this journey that we call life. Debbie told me that Pete's favorite scripture was the 23rd Psalm. I want to read that to you, but I'm, I'm going to first read it to you out of the New Living Translation because I want you to hear this psalm in a way that you probably have not heard it before. For, for many of us, the psalm uh, came to be something that we had memorized, a piece of scripture that we could say from memory and not really focusing on the words but hear these words from the new living translation the lord is my shepherd i have everything i need he lets me rest in green meadows he leads me beside the peaceful streams he renews my strength he guides me along right paths bringing honor to his name even though i walk through the dark valley of death i will not be afraid for you are close beside me. Your rod and staff comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of mine enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Now, now, there are some words here that are different from what you're used to hearing in the King James. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right path. And even though we walk through that dark valley of death, that we have nothing to be afraid of, because you are close beside me. There is comfort. You prepare a feast. We, we are welcomed as a guest. We are anointed. And our cup overflows with blessing. And the word that stands out to me above all others. That you will pursue me all the days of my life not just go alongside of us but when we wander off the path that we're supposed to be traveling that there's that spirit that is pursuing us 
always presenting and illuminating the path that we were created to follow and that we will live in the house of the Lord forever. I want to go back and close my remarks here by reading that psalm again to you, but this time using the words that are near and dear to our hearts. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his same name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you, Paul, for those beautiful words and that heartfelt reflection. Um, I'd like to share a few words from the obituary. Uh, then we'll have a closing prayer, and then we will proceed to um, the cemetery at MES United Methodist Church in Manita. John C. Pete Mills. Age 90, a Manita, passed away peacefully at his home on Sunday, September 20th, 2020. He was born in Bluefield, West Virginia, to the late Robert Richard Mills and Bertha Franklin Mills. He was also preceded in death by his brothers, Fred, Franklin, Douglas, Harry, and Donald. He is survived by his wife of 64 years, as Paul said, Debbie and his daughter Carolyn, his son Stephen, his grandson Bradley, his sister Helen, and numerous nieces and nephews. He was a member of the Bedford chapter number 108 Eastern Star and the Williamson Road Masonic Lodge, which I believe will have a presentation at the graveside. Pete loved the outdoors, he loved fishing, he loved watching football, and he loved NASCAR. The family would like to send special thanks to the Salem, Virginia home-based nurses and staff, AmeriCare nurses and staff, his longtime caregiver and friend, Chantel, Gilmore, and the Gentle Shepherd Hospice nurses and staff. Pete was greatly loved, and he will be greatly missed. So meek, so humble, so gentle, so polite, so generous. We are going to miss him greatly. Well, as I said, let's have a closing prayer, and this service will conclude at the Emmaus United Methodist Church Cemetery. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the life of Pete. He was tremendously loved, and he will be greatly missed. We pray that in the coming weeks, you will console his wife, Debbie, his daughter, Carolyn, his son, Steve, and the rest of the family and all of his friends, as well as his church family. As we feel the loss of Pete's presence, may the power of your Holy Spirit console us as no one else can. 
May we all find comfort that only the gospel of Jesus Christ can bring. May you continue to surround us all with the love and kindness of good friends and words filled with your grace. May we treasure the memory of Pete for many, many days to come. We ask all this, Father, through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns together with you and the Holy Spirit as one God forever and ever. And all of God's people said, our closing hymn this afternoon is When the Saints Come Marching In. <laughs>